a lot of people are noticing a changing tone in Wisconsin politics, not just from protesters, but also from Democratic lawmakers. Democratic Assemblyman Gordon Hintz exploding at a female conservative colleague, telling Republican Assemblywoman Michelle Litchens, quote, you are dead, and dropping an F-bomb in the middle of all that. Outside of the Capitol chambers, Democrats have also been on the streets fanning the flames of public outrage, openly encouraging protesters to swarm the Capitol in advance of and in reaction to votes and promising a continued battle. We will carry on this battle to the streets of Wisconsin. We'll be on the radio stations. We'll be in the newspapers. Every turn they take, we hope your faces will appear to let them know what they have done is wrong, they cannot stand, and we will not quit fighting till we reverse this assault on the working people of Wisconsin. Even the Communist Party is surprised by the militant rhetoric coming from Democrats. I have to tell you that in every one of the situations that I've been in, um, in, in Madison and in Indianapolis, there is a radicalization going on among legislatures, Democratic legislatures, that I've never seen in my lifetime and I don't think uh, any of us have. The Communist Party was actively involved in the Madison protests. In fact, one of the most recognizable symbols of the protests, the blue fist, originates from a socialist and communist symbol. DemocraticUnderground.com identifies instances of it being used by Malaysia's Socialist Party and Austria's Communist Party. It can also be found on the office doors of some Wisconsin Democratic lawmakers, like Senator Chris Larson. After the 14 Senate Democrats returned from Illinois to a massive crowd of cheering protesters, the Communist Party paid close attention to what they had to say. Governor Walker has polarized this state, having hundreds of thousands of people like you come out and demonstrate because he's divided our state, he's put up a wall between your government and his cronies, the Koch brothers. So now it's time for us, the Fabulous 14, to come back and unite with you. This has always been about workers' rights. So we want to unite, we want to fight, and we want to get back workers' rights. That kind of rhetoric has led the Communist Party to consider the possibilities of collaborating with Democratic lawmakers. When they walked into the midst of that crowd, uh, there was no doubt that these people were seen as heroes of the working class and heroes of, of the people's movement. Um, and I think that has a trickle-up effect on the party. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not ready to say that the, the Democratic Party is going to transform into a, uh, to a real... Uh, fighting working class party right now, but I am willing to say that we have to work with them and we have to see the possibility that a lot of these Democrats uh, are going to move towards more independent positions. Um, and by independent, I mean independent of the corporations, independent of the, of the finance capital, and independent of, of, of uh, um, the ruling class in this country. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.